Thomas Moran is a famous painter known for landscape. He was a painter and printmaker of the Hudson River School in New York. He is well known for painting American landscape, especially of the West. You can see some of his work in a local museum, Gilcrease, right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Today, inspired by Thomas Moran, we are going to make our own simple landscape. We will begin by taking a piece of paper and folding it in half. We will fold it after we fold it in half. We will turn it the opposite direction and fold it again. This will be for our journal. Get your pencil ready with an eraser. Go to the upper left hand corner and you will begin by drawing a wavy diagonal line until you hit the opposite side of the paper. We are going to divide our paper into four different sections. Again, go the opposite direction and making a wavy line go downward into that lower left hand bottom square. Give yourself a little bit of space and do the same thing again until you hit the opposite side of the paper and you will draw one more line starting at the edge and going all the way up. You should have four wavy lines on your paper. It will look like two V's if you were turning your paper horizontally, but vertically it will look like one, two, three, four, five sections. In the upper right hand section, we will draw a cloud. Draw a straight line and a wavy line on top. And then on the opposite side in the left hand corner, draw another cloud. Straight line, wavy line on top. If you would like to draw more than two clouds, go ahead. The next section, we are going to draw some pine trees. These were commonly seen in the Old West. Start by drawing a line and a line coming out of that line, connecting it at the bottom. Those look like um, very thin triangles. This will be the stump of our tree or the trunk of our tree. I'm going to draw four. You can draw more than four if you would like. Once you have those mapped in, we're going to add zigzag lines on both sides. come just above the bottom of that tree trunk that you drew. Do that to every little triangle that you drew. On the left side, draw a diagonal zigzag line. And on the right side, do the same. Do this with all the tri thin triangles that you drew. Make sure that you come around each one with a zigzag line.
add wavy lines to show depth underneath and around the trees. In the third section, we're going to add a small boat and water. The boat is a straight line and two diagonal lines coming inward. Attach those lines with a smaller line that's parallel to the top line. Draw a straight line in the center and a diagonal line coming out and touching the edge of the boat and then a line coming across to connect. I did mine curved to look like a sail. On the opposite side, draw a line coming down and a line parallel to it just below and attach it. This will be a little sailboat. At the bottom, we will add a windmill. Draw a line diagonally and another diagonal line. It will look like a thin triangle. Inside, crisscross lines. At the top, draw a triangle coming out and meeting the inside. The point of the triangle will, will meet the inside. Draw another triangle on the opposite side. And another triangle on the opposite side. So one, two, three, four, and one coming out from the top. And another coming out from the top. These will meet in a circle, and that will be a windmill. Draw wavy lines in the water, but before that, let's draw another tree. The stump comes out and draw a wavy line around the tree stump, or the trunk of the tree. So the trunk comes out, wavy line across, not wavy, excuse me, zigzag line across, and draw a wavy line coming on the outside all the way around, hitting the upper portion of the trunk. It's okay if you make a mistake, try again. Um, add details if you'd like, like a little hole in the tree if you want, some lines. You can make this as detailed as you want it to be. If you want to add a duck to the pond, you can do that. Inside of the water, I add wavy lines to create movement and motion. Again, before that, I added another tree on the left. So before I added the lines, I added that tree on the left. You can add more trees if you'd like. I put two, you can add more. Now here comes the wavy lines for the motion in the water. This gives the water movement. Now go to the lower portion and we're going to draw a house and a car. We begin by drawing a line, another line going across, and a parallel line coming down. To the side, draw another line coming out and down. Go to that first part that you drew and draw a triangle on top of that shape. Draw a line coming out from the edge of the triangle, match it to the edge, and a diagonal line hitting the edge of that house. Erase a line that might stick out too far. You may add details to your house. I will add windows, a door. On the side of the house where you drew the triangle, everything will be drawn facing towards you. But on the front of the house where I would put my door, things need to be drawn at an angle. So everything is sort of slanted. The door 
comes down, line goes out and down. But notice how the top line of the door is slanted. And the same for the windows. Once I move my hand, you'll see there's a bit of a, an angle. So it looks like it's facing the opposite direction. I add a little car. You don't have to add this detail, but you can. You can add flowers instead. You can add a fence. You can add any detail you'd like to go with your house. Maybe some flowers, um, a person. I add a little car. Two circles for wheels and two little squares for windows. You can add a handle for the door. You can turn this into a truck if you want. That would be a rectangle shape in the back. It's up to you. In the bottom lower portion, I'm going to add trees. These trees will be bigger. Um, we're not going to see all of the tree at the bottom because it's closest to us and it's giving us a perspective that the trees are near and not far away. So we're drawing them larger and we're only drawing a portion of them because we can't see them all. So I'm drawing part of the trunk and then coming around so we can only see a portion of that tree. And then I'm drawing two other larger bushels that look like the heads of the trees in the corner. And I'm doing a little overlapping. You can't see all of the tree, just a portion. Now once you have all of this in, you can go back and add additional things if you want to your picture. You can add something in the water, maybe a fish, somebody fishing. You can add uh, more to the house if you want. This is a basic sketch of a landscape. Once you finish that sketch, outline everything in Sharpie. And once you've outlined everything in Sharpie, go ahead and color it in using colored pencils or markers. Here's an example of how I chose to color my picture in. You can choose to color it any way you'd like. Make sure every section has color.